Honeybees are attracted to the plentiful nectar, yellow flowers, and scent of canola fields in bloom. In past years, as canola production has grown, so has the number of honeybee colonies. Health of beehives remains high as these two industries work in close proximity. So we've got probably, I don't know, three or four quarters that every year have beehives that get set up beside them for honey production. So I think that tells you, gives you a pretty good testament to, you know, how important canola is to bees. Try to be as responsible as we can. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, I think there's a conception out there among some people, right, that, you know, farmers maybe just, just spray something or take an action, right? You're not really knowing if you need it. Like we're very conscious of it, right? Um, we're making sure that we're operating and, and using products that are regulated to allow us to use them. Not looking for a reason every morning to start our sprayer, right? <laughs> That's not our goal every day of, 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 you know, any of the products that we produce, frankly. That's, you know. Even for fertility wise, you know, we're, we're, we're soil testing all of our land every year, so we're not, we're not overusing those products. We're just right. putting what, what the crop will use and, uh, you know, rotating our chemical groups, uh, not doing excessive tillage, things like that. You know, we want to leave the land in better shape uh, than when we got it for, for the next generation, you know. So, this is my wife, Pam. Um, so, I guess I don't have to say my name. Yeah. <laughs> Been married for 32 years. 32 years, yeah. And these are our, some of our children, not all of them. We're missing one, I guess, so. So this is our grandson, Connor. He's five. I'm Kaylee. This is my husband, Ken. We work on the farm in the summertime, I guess, so. Hi, I'm Jeff. I work on the farm when I can, and other than that, I spend a lot of time surveying, working in construction, and do a bit of forestry work in winter. Uh, I'm Sylvia. I am a woodland supervisor for Tulco. I graduated from college last year, so I'm just working on getting my uh, registered professional forest technician degree. Uh, my name is Scott and I'm just helping here on the farm in the summers. Dad, Mom and Dad ran a dairy farm close to Calgary. So in 1963, they would have come up here for the first time as missionaries. Liked the country, um, really taken with it. So went back, sold the dairy, and uh, came back up here. And then, you know, Mom and Dad ended up buying, you know, a farm just four miles out of town, which is, you know, two miles across country from, from where we are right now. You know, we grew up there, had a grain mixed farm, so we would have had cattle and you know, the milk cow, and he did whatever it took to do, right? So when Dad retired, there was four of us boys up here that the land that was deeded was kind of split between the four of us, so we bought it from Dad yeah. when Dad decided to, you know, to slow down and retire. You know, I guess we're that hard to get along with that all my brothers moved away. <laughs> so, you know, we ended up uh, farming all that land, and then, you know, we just kept expanding. Um, had the opportunity to buy, you know, add to our land base, and. Yeah, it's worked out. So, you know, I don't, I can't say we've really had hard times. I mean, the country's been, you know, really good to us. I mean, we've been very fortunate. Well, how big is the farm now? 40 some hundred acres? Yeah, we're, yeah, 4,500 acres, a little better. Um, yeah. yeah, right in there, yeah. Canola is obviously your cash crop. I mean, canola, I would, I think it would be safe to say that canola grew this country in a large, you know, to a large degree. Yeah, yeah. over the years, definitely, I would say canola contributed a lot to it, but it's still, you know, you're, everything happens fast. So you get that late frost or you're an early frost and yeah, you, which, you know, I don't know how much different that is than, you know, most areas grow crops that are, you know, the longer your crop, you know, the, the more days to maturity generally means, you know, a higher yielding crop, right? So you generally, you know, you're always pushing that envelope because you want a better yield. So we try to grow a variety that, you know, lets us fit in that window. So